Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Good evening. It's about 6 p.m., just around time for evening prayer. This is Victor and the Psalter, Benedictine Oblate, father of three, husband of one, and lover of the Psalms. I am all about the Psalms. I do everything related to the Psalms, uh, everything from chanting the Psalms to setting the Psalms to music, to praying the Psalms in the Liturgy of the Hours, to meditating on each individual Psalm, um, for using the Psalms as a method of spiritual growth and uh, spiritual nourishment. Everything, anything I, anything I can do with the Psalms, I'm going to post it here on this channel. So this particular um, branch of the channel, this particular sub-series of the channel, uh, is called uh, My Daily or the, the Daily Spiritual Battle and the Psalms. Because uh, I think there's a, a terrible uh, lack of or void of material uh, about the daily spiritual battle that lay people undergo. I think the last saint to really comment on that in depth would have been saint francis de sales in his book um, introduction to the devout life uh, that book introduction to the devout life is a very very good uh, resource uh, for how to deal with the spiritual battle as a lay person but it's been around for quite a long time there hasn't been anything as far as i'm aware of there's not much out there um, that uh, really addresses the day-to-day -day struggle of lay people uh, to the degree that the scriptures do or to the degree that uh, imitation of Christ does. Imitation of Christ is a, def is a definite uh, essential for your library. Um, we'll talk more about essential spiritual reading outside of the scriptures um, in another video, but the focus of this particular series is uh, the, the daily spiritual battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil, uh, using the Psalms as the primary weapon. I mean, we all know the power of the rosary and things like that, but this, uh, the Psalms have their own power as well because they were the prayer book of people of God for centuries. They still are. And they were the inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were the prayer book of the, the incarnate Christ. The apostles prayed them. Uh, they've been chanted f for, from generation to generation. So they are worth quite a lot. Now, in this particular video, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what psalms we should be praying every day. And my essential, uh, I have 15 psalms that I must pray every day to feel like I have officially uh, prayed my quota, I guess you could say, of the day. Not to say that God's up there saying, well, you didn't pray your 15 psalms today. Uh, it's for my sake. It's for my benefit. Because when I pray these 15 particular psalms, I feel like they each contain their own intrinsic value. And I'm referring to the Psalms of Ascent. Maybe you've heard of them. And that would be Psalms 120 to Psalm, Psalm 125. There was a book recently written by a, uh, uh, believe it or not, an Anglican uh, uh, musician, composer, who uh, has a lot of great insight into the Hebrew and into the Jewish origins of the Psalms of Ascent. And he's he really conveyed, his name was uh, David Mitchell, I believe. Uh, the book is called Song of Ascents. Anyway, these 15 Psalms um, contain all these great mysteries. And it's nothing occultic, nothing esoteric about it, uh, but they they are, they are called the Psalms of Ascent because they are the 15 Psalms that were normally prayed during pilgrimage to the Holy Temple of Jerusalem. You have to remember that before Christianity, before the destruction of the Jerusalem Temple, the Temple was really the only uh, quote-unquote church. It was the only place where you could go and meet God um, in, his, in his concentrated presence on earth. Um, and before the temple, of course, they had the tabernacle in the traveling tabernacle in the desert. 
And now we have, if you're a believer in, the, in Jesus Christ, uh, you, you, we accept Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the tabernacle, the fulfillment of Eden, the fulfillment of the Jerusalem temple. They all point to the risen Christ as the living temple. And so we are stones in that temple. So when you pray the, these Psalms of Ascent with that, uh, with that worldview in mind, that uh, the entire cosmos is somehow an extension of the cosmic, not cosmic is not the right word, the, the resurrected Christ, um, whereas he is a, totally apart and other from creation, yet he sustains it through the power of the Spirit, we become, as I said in our previous video, we are the baptized uh, nation of priests. So when we pray these 15 Psalms of Ascent, we, 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 we remember that we are pilgrims on this earth, and Christ is the temple uh, to which we are making our pilgrimage to, uh, to which we are making our pilgrimage. So, to whom? To whom we are making a pilgrimage? Sorry, it's not a, Christ is not an it. But uh, because he is our living temple, we, as Christian pilgrims on earth, uh, are making our pilgrimage to the risen temple of Christ uh, himself. And so as we face our daily struggles, we've all been there, the... Uh, the, the maybe the threatening phone call from someone who's very angry at you the everything happens everything happening at one time the boss yells at you um, you make a terrible mistake on the job um, the wife is angry at you and threatens to divorce you the kids are rebelling against you and saying hateful things towards you the entire world comes crashing down when those when the world seems to be falling apart you really only have two choices and for, as someone who suffers from panic disorder, I've found that the, the most effective uh, remedy for anxiety and for panic is simply submitting, surrendering to God. And what does that constitute? What does that mean? Well, it means that deep down at, in the very core of your being, the heart of your heart, so you, if you believe you have a soul, you, you know what I'm talking about, the, the, the the very center of your being from that from the greatest from the the depths of your being you um, accept whatever is beyond your control you simply accept it maybe even open your arms and say I accept this cup that you give to me O God if it's your will not to say that we don't do anything about it but the things we you know, we can choose how do we react. How do we react? We can choose what we say in those circumstances. But there are things that are beyond our control. Like, for instance, I don't know when COVID's going to end. I don't know if I'll still have a job next year. I don't know if um, if I'll end up maxing out my credit card trying to help a relative who's in financial uh, straits. I have no clue. So those are the things that used to make me very anxious. What if? What if? What do I do? So these Psalms of Ascent are very good reminders that we are on a pilgrimage and that nothing, nothing that we happen to go through in life is permanent. I have to repeat that, that the Psalms of Ascent, Psalms 120 to 135, remind us that we are on a pilgrimage on earth, that nothing is permanent here, nothing. And that the only thing that is guaranteed, without a doubt, is that one day, you and I will die, and we will rot, and we will become food for the worms. That's it. My mother used to say to me whenever I was a rebellious teenager, she, uh, she would say things like, um, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I would always rebel. I would say, no, I don't want to do that. And, uh, she says, well, son, the only thing that you have to do in life is die. And it always stuck with me. My mom was a very religious Catholic woman, and... Um, she had this real world kind of wisdom about her. She said, the only thing you have to do is die. And that was like a summary of the entire Christian eschatology. The only thing you have to do is die and face judgment, basically. So um, you choose how you react in life, but there's one thing that we will, that's ine inevitable, and that's one day we will die 
unless of course Jesus happens to return and you're you, you receive your glorified body while you're still living but unless that happens um, you will have to face death you will be on your deathbed one day if you're lucky if you're not suddenly killed in an accident or shot in the face uh, while being mugged that kind of thing um, so until then the world will continue to be a brutal yet beautiful place simultaneously what do we do how do we pray to survive well God gave us those prayers in the Psalms. He gave us the Psalms of Ascent. Now, I would not be doing much justice to these Psalms if I tried to go through all of them right now. Um, I already have a commentary on Psalm 120. I have a commentary on Psalm 128. But what I'll do with this series on the spiritual battle is I'll probably just pick one, uh, one of these Psalms per video to show how it relates to the daily struggle and our pilgrimage from this life to the world yet to come. Uh, one thing I find most wise about the Psalms of Ascent is that Psalm 120 begins in the nitty-gritty of daily life. Check this out. Psalm 120, verses 1 and 2. In my distress, I cry, I cry to the Lord that he may answer me. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Check that out. So here we have someone way at the bottom of Zion. He's not even going up to Zion yet. He's he's in his daily struggle. Maybe it's family problems. Maybe it's health problems. Maybe it's spiritual oppression. Whatever it is, deliver me, O Lord. So we he, this is this is us. This is this is us in our mire of uh, the mortal condition. In our distress, we cry to God and we say, "Answer us." I mean. Look at the world we live in. We So this is the voice of the people of God right here. In my distress, in our distress, I cry to the Lord. This is the voice of the crucified Christ. Okay. And so that, that immediately, it, it immediately begins with that, that uh, cry to the Lord. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. The lying lips, deceitful tongue could be taken on many levels. On a literal level, it just means... From um, deliver me from deceitful people, from you know two-faced, backstabbing people, many of which we have to work with, many of which we have to live with. It's just a fact of life. Um, or the lying lips of the demonic world, the, 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 the demonic spirits who lie and try to deceive you from one moment to the next, the deceitful tongues. So we're saying, Lord, deliver us from the lying lips of evil people. Deliver us from the lying lips of the demons and the devil. So you see there's a lot of spiritual depth there just in this, these two verses. And notice how it begins immediately with surrender. Surrendering to God. I cry to the Lord. You cry to the Lord because you accept and acknowledge that you need Him. It's when we, when we acknowledge that we need Him, honestly need Him and depend on Him, that's when good things start to happen. So... Um, in summary, life is going to throw many, many darts at you. The devil is going to throw many darts at you every day, every hour. Why? Because you, you, because you are a pilgrim. You are a prophet. You are a priest. You are a king through the, birth, through the grace of baptism. And the devil knows that if you stay on that pilgrimage... Stay on the, uh, avoid the pitfalls and traps along the way. You will reach the, the peak of Mount Zion. You will reach the Holy Temple, who is Christ. And the beauty of it is that we can experience that glory right here and right now through the grace of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Holy Spirit sometimes touches us on a sensible level and we're able to experience that glory of being a part of that living temple. And there's nothing greater. Uh, I, it doesn't happen to me that often, but when it does, it's just like the psalm says, better one day in your courts, better one day in your courts, O Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. So when, um, when you find yourself in a uh, distressful situation, distressing situation, uh, think about that. Think about that first, those opening lines. Deliver me, O Lord, from lying lips, from, deceit, from a deceitful tongue, because... Uh, the devil's always making suggestions in our minds 
that can easily lead to terrible, terrible actions, tragic actions. If you watch the news, you hear all these stories about, uh, say, a, a parent killing their child out of rage uh, and then regretting it and, and, and spending the rest of their life as vegetables because they can't believe they actually murdered their own family member. Um, these are all satanic suggestions that people end up believing and acting upon because they don't, they're not, they're not offering to God. They're not offering themselves to God. They're not letting themselves be guided as, as a sheep of the, of the shepherd. Um, and I mean, there's a whole talk on how we can be, on what, the, what it means to be a sheep. Um, so the spiritual battle, the, the, the Christian, the Christian struggle is, it's, uh, a matter of surrendering, 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 but not in action, not in action. Uh, doing the best we can do with what we can do. For example, choosing to not react uh, in a hostile manner to someone who's hostile to you. Because as St. Benedict says, we're supposed to avoid strife. Avoid strife because strife is of the devil. We know the things we, we can choose. We know the things we're in control of. Right, because they're right. They're right there in front of us. Like I can choose not to use my credit card to make that three thousand dollar purchase that I'll probably regret later. Um, I can choose not to go to that link that will take me to a dangerous website. Right. But I cannot choose when I will die. I cannot choose when the pandemic will end. I cannot choose, like I said, when I whether or not I'll lose my job. I cannot choose. Whether or not a hurricane stronger than Ida will come next year and destroy Louisiana, I don't know. But the Psalms of Ascent, okay? Psalms 120, 21, all the way to 135. If you, if you pray them every day, you won't regret it. See you next time.